going up and down, so I'm going to assume we have sound on this one. It's been a while. I'm doing another one of my um, anime that I've watched recently streams. Um, had some changes. We moved the computer in here. I got my own setup, but I don't have a mic yet, so I'm back on the old one. Screen's a little small, so I'm kind of having to adjust to that again. Um, as you may remember from last time, I was... Um, doing a challenge to myself where I was taking anime that's on Crunchyroll and also on Hulu and taking it off my Crunchyroll queue and putting it onto my Hulu queue by watching the first episode um, just to really try and fire through a lot of anime. I got probably halfway through this set before I stopped doing that. I, s I have a list of all of the anime that I have remaining to move over that I just haven't moved over yet. And then um, a couple that were on Hulu to VRV. Um, other than that, we did start off with the Hulu challenge. And we, um, I think I got through 13 anime this way. So we'll start with the ones that I have moved to watching this week. Shall we? All right. Man, it's been a long, long ass time. It was, uh, it really has been a long time. All of this anime I've been like, done with for a fat minute. So the, f I actually have some completed anime, so I'm probably gonna start there. Where is this one? I really can't remember if I did this in a previous uh, week, and it wasn't in the week, uh, well, not week, but set, it wasn't in the one directly before this, so I'm gonna assume I started it with the Hulu challenge, because I did watch this on Hulu. We have Gugure Kokuri-san. Um, it's a comedy anime about a little girl who plays the part of a doll, and all of these uh, demons and deities and such that she accidentally starts gathering around herself. Um, I think it's really funny. The opening song is great. Daisuke Ono plays Kokuri. Um, so he, he sings the OP too and it's really good. Definitely recommend the opening theme even if you don't watch the damn anime. It's so fucking good. Um, I, I like the raccoon. Um, Episode 6 had a JoJo reference. <laughs> it's weird, the more you watch, the more you think it's like some kind of weird fetish thing. So there's always like some weird fetish thing in the episode. But you don't notice until like episode 8, and you're like, wait a fucking second. I thought it was really funny, I loved it. Um, and I completed it, so... Uh, we go to the next completed anime that I definitely, yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm so glad. I, I got around to watching The Promised Neverland, I was like, I'm just gonna pop out one episode of this, just one episode of this, and then I'll move on, because I knew nobody would stop screaming about it when it was airing. Everyone was really into it. I personally won't, um, spoil the twist here, but I... I'm sure if you read this, it'll spoil the twist. Um, this anime is fucking bomb. I watched it all in one sitting. I, I, I lost my mind. I cried every episode. It was so great. Definitely recommended. I can't wait until season two drops. Um, amazing. Amazing anime. All of the hype was worth it. <laughs> I'm trying to direct the cats away from the keyboard. Hold on. Um, then I started watching, um, I did complete another anime, and it might throw you for a loop which one I completed. Oh no, I don't know how to do this one in Japanese. Okay, thank you for opening a new tab for me. Uh, you may remember a while back I added the show Kiss Him, Not Me to the list. I watched the first episode and kept it on hold. The only reason I started watching this is because, um, 
a friend really highly recommended it to me. They really wanted me to watch it so we could talk about it. And I wasn't fucking having it when I watched the first episode, but, um... Because of another anime on this list that I've started watching, I was like, okay, I started watching this because of a different friend. I'll watch one episode of that to one episode of Kiss Him, Not Me. Just so I can get Kiss Him, Not Me out of the way and I don't piss anybody off. The deeper you go in this anime, the more you realize that it's actually a fucking joke. Like, this is legitimately a parody. I'm convinced of it now. I wasn't... It does so many things to try and convince you that it's not a parody, but there's just no honest-to-God way that somebody who wrote this and meant this with 100% of their heart to not be a parody um, of shoujo. Um... Um, I wrote down episode 8, Eye Catch, so, like, the thing they do before the commercials. I guess one of them was really good, but god, I can't remember it off the top of my head, because it's been, like, a month since I watched it. I actually did get through this in pretty much a day because of the other show that I was watching. Um, and I finished it, I gave it a 7, because it's, it's gotta be a fucking parody. It's, it's gotta be, there's just no honest-to-god way. The ending, knowing the ending, going into watching this, absolutely helped me get through it as well. Because, I won't spoil the ending, but it definitely helped me get through it because I was not ready to go into this anime thinking that she was gonna end up with this person or that person or this person, you know? Um, definitely watch it if you're willing to watch through a parody that you're not sure if the person writing it knew it was a parody or if they were taking it serious. It, it's it's in a really weird place for me. I, I, I just don't know. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I added one from off my list. It wasn't on my list. But, guess what got added to Crunchyroll at one point while I was um, going through here? I had to take a pause from everything and watch the fucking Osamatsu Sun movie the moment it was added to fucking Crunchyroll, like the day of. Um, and it made me sad. Like, not in the, not in the Osamatsu Sun season finale sort of sad way. I guess it did that at the very end. But it's more like these characters only shine particularly when they're in a good skit. This isn't a show that's meant to have, like, even 22-minute long episodes with the same plot line. And you can tell that from watching, like, the first season and the second season that they tend to fall apart the longer you go with the same idea. This movie is all centered on one idea, and they went with a somewhat serious one. Most of the gags fall flat, and none of the characters really shine the way that they usually do in the anime. Which was really distressing for me because, I don't know, I just love Osamatsu. I love the characters. I just really fell in love with the show when I watched the first season and the second season. I was hoping that the movie was going to live up to it, but I think it was a little much to ask for, uh, you know, like an hour, two hours of um, just the equivalent of the episodes of the TV show when they wanted to go for a bigger plot. And I understand why they did this. And it was okay, but... They definitely shine better in the TV show, and I only recommend this to people who are really, really into the characters and seeing them. Um, the plot of this one centers around them um, going to a school reunion, and one of them has such deep regret for something that happened back in high school that they essentially get transported back into that person's memories until they find out what they regret and how to fix that. It's a serious plot line for this type of show, especially like a, a one-off gag type of situation. I'm sure there were a couple good jokes in there, but I can't remember any off the top of my head, but I'm sure I could tell you a great gag from any of these kids in the show. I can remember one good Chorimatsu gag, but that's just seeing him as a kid. That it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't work. When they were in high school, they had slightly different personalities because this and that and the other, and they grew up into the meats that we know today. But seeing them as kids was funny. It was, a, it was a good gag. Each one of them had their own little quirks. 
that are very different from how they are in the modern episodes. Please don't growl at each other. Thank you, cats. I know it's just there. Come here, Tasha. Um, yeah, I, I, I recommend it if you really like Osamatsu, but not as like an intro to Osamatsu because you will be um, not as into it or not as into the show, depending on which one you prefer. Um, then I finished, I think this one I started in the last group, but I did complete it this time. We have, um, Miss Vampire Who Lives Next Door, which is a, this shit, Vam a comedy vampire Yuri, um, <laughs> it, it, it's vampire Yuri where two of these girls um, are vampires, Sophie and Ellie, and then the other two are regular Japanese teenagers, um, Akari and Hinata? Sorry. Um, I thought it was really funny. And it, it, like, it, it's a Yuri. They don't openly make out in the show or anything like that, but they do in the opening theme. They kiss each other on the cheeks, and it's very sweet. Um, but basically a lot of the comedy in this show derives from the humans being more weird about vampire stuff than the vampires. Like, the best gag in the show that I remember off the top of my head every time is when, um, Akari asks Sophie, she's like, Is it true that vampires can't enter somewhere without being invited in? And she's like, well, yeah, I guess that is true. She's like, is it like a force field or a barrier or something that raises? And she's like, no, they just think we're fucking rude. God damn. <laughs> it's really funny to me. Um, yeah, so the show, it's just like a slice of life vampire theory. It's great. I highly recommend it. There's a JoJo reference in episode six. I'm noting those down now as I watch. I wasn't doing it before, so there's plenty that I missed. I can hear Butter screaming outside the room, and I'm really sad. Oh, no. He just wants in. Oh! That's the loudest he's ever been, so I'm going to let him in the room because he needs some loving. It sure sounds like butter. Um, let's see if I finished any other anime. No. <laughs> yeah? You let me know? So now we're moving on to stuff that got moved to watching. With like an asterisk. So... Oh my goodness, what do you need? <laughs> oh my goodness. You're just standing there. What do you want? You just want attention? Um, we're moving on to watching. Um, let me move up to my watching list to remember what's on it because some of these are no longer on here. Um, okay, we'll start with Angels of Death, a show that I started watching because it was on my Crunchyroll queue and on Hulu. It's got like an indie horror game vibe, like one of those um, Mad Father RPG Maker-esque dudes. It centers around a girl who gets put in this tower and each floor has a different killer in it that knows her somehow but she doesn't remember how. And her and this other serial killer team up at the- he wants to escape the tower, she helps him escape, and then he kills her. That's, um, that's their deal. She just wants to die. Um, it, it gave me good vibes. I liked it a lot. I added it to watching. I got a couple of episodes in, but then I hit Promised Neverland and forgot about this because holy shit. Um, so it's still sitting on my watching list, though. I'll definitely go back to it soon. Um, haha. <laughs> so here we have the show that I started watching in tandem with Kiss Him, Not Me, just so I could get through Kiss Him, Not Me. I put... I'm going to go fucking feral. I love Fire Force so goddamn much. From the creator of Soul Eater, we have Firefighter anime. Huh? Um, 
but firefighters that fight people who spontaneously combust and turn into demons with their fire magic. It's fucking metal. Watch this goddamn show. If you want to see my sweet little baby girl Maki just beat the shit out of six men with her bare hands, please watch this goddamn show. It's really good. All of the characters have their own unique quirks and they're good. It depends on how much you hate the lucky lechery trope because one of the characters um, quirks is that every once in a while she just trips and her clothes fall off or whatever. Um, so if you can stomach that, then definitely watch the show. The villains are all fun. Everyone has their own unique powers. It's very good. Highly recommended. Um, it's still currently airing. There are 18 episodes out now. It comes out on Fridays. And, uh, I live for it. I fucking breathe this anime right now. For real. Please, tell me what you want from me. You just wanna- you just wanna go into the pit? Yeah, you just wanna go into the pit. Alright. <laughs> This is what I watched with Kiss Him Not Me in order to get myself through Kiss Him Not Me. And it fucking worked because I couldn't wait to get to the next episode. The openings are both bops. There, There's just no way to get around it. Miss Green Apple really came out the gate hard with Inferno. And Mayday's also great. Highly recommend. Episode 8's climax is... Just a beautiful, beautiful piece of animation. And episode 15 has this really, really great atmosphere shift that nearly threw me out of my chair. It was crazy. Highly recommend. Um, and then um, another show that I started a day or two ago. I, I, um, I originally thought that this was just going to be Rosario and Vampire again, which is just a show that I was into when I was in, like, high school, middle school. But, I was fucking wrong. I was really going to leave this on the plan to watch for a while, at least until it finished airing, thinking that it was Rosario and Vampire, until someone sent me a link to The Art of Seduction from episode 8. And then I was like, well, now i got to watch the fucking show, because I'm in it. Um... It's a comedy, um, I guess sort of more like Bobo Bo style. You really get Bobo Bo from the opening theme, which is a bop. Um, yeah, it's so great. All of the characters have your, their own unique personalities. Um, the main character, Iruma, is a human. His parents are deadbeats and have been making him work his entire life to um, fund their lifestyle, and they sell his soul to a demon in their final act of parenthood. And the demon's like, I'm your grandpa now, you wanna go to school? <laughs> so, um, he's a human in a school of demons, and he's under the impression that if they find out that he's human, they will eat him, which is technically correct. Um, he's great at dodging things, crisis aversion is his main trait because of all the crises he's been in, just making sure I'm still streaming. Um, <laughs> all of the crises he's been in, um, so he can dodge anything. He out-dodges a man into being his servant and also gets this cute little green waifu. It's hilarious. The gags are great. Episode 6 is what really sold me. And if I was already six episodes in in one sitting, but episode 6 is the one that sold me that anyone who enjoys comedy would enjoy this. Daisuke Ono is also in this one as a grumpy teacher. I, I just fucking like Jotaro, dude. And the grumpy teacher is great. All of the characters are unique and fun to watch. Um, highly recommend. This one comes out on Saturdays. Um, and now we go to the ones that have been spared and left on our plan to watch list. Which means... Yeehaw. Um, back up at the top, we have... <laughs> I'm really hoping this works. Yay, I did it. <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, this is how not to summon a demon lord. 
the undying proof that I am Isekai trash and will watch fucking anything. Um, especially if there's a Hikimid as the main character. That's what sold me, I'm gonna be real. Even the enemies have giant tits in my Isekai. In the opening theme, there's like a dragon mob that they're fighting throughout it with just huge tits. I don't get it. I've only watched one episode of this. It's still in plan to watch. It's... I'm not... I... I don't know, man. I'm just isekai trash. That's why it's still here. <laughs> Rough, let me tell ya. Um... Guess not a lot of stuff, but here we go. Here we go. Now we're now we're hitting the vein. Oh. Well then how do I find it? I guess it is. I I don't know how they Oh, it's all one word like that. Okay. <laughs> My bad. There's a dash in it on Crunchyroll. And a make a toddy? Um Yeah, I don't know, it kind of reminded me of Shirobako for a minute, but not really. Um, girl who saw an anime as a kid that deeply impacted her but doesn't remember the name of said anime joins anime club. The anime. <laughs> it's a cute girl that's do cute things. This is where I stopped doing the Hulu challenge. I just watched this on Crunchyroll because that's where it is. As a little palate cleanser. And then it stopped being a palate cleanser and just started being what I was doing. It's okay. Um. Here we have Voice of Fox, which I think is actually... Um, ta ta Taiwanese? I don't know. Taiwan? No? I don't know where it comes from, but it's not- it doesn't originate from Japan, I'll go with. I think it's a... I don't know. The plot of it is, um, that's Fox. He's a singer, but he's like a, a um, a Millie Vanilli situation where he's behind the stage doing all the real singing, but there's a hotter guy out on stage doing the, um, act. And that's his existence. I only watched one episode, and I think the episodes are 13 minutes each. It's a, it's one of those short ones. Um, Brian was really into this one, so I gave it a shot. If the mood catches me right, I'll definitely watch it. I just not in the mood right now. It's a it's a music anime with songs in it, and it's 13 minutes long. So give it a shot, I guess. Um, holy shit. Holy shit, y'all. Holy shit. Where is it? It's not under which. There the fuck we go. Y'all? This is someone's masterpiece. I'm saying that straight up at the start of this, having seen one episode of the goddamn anime. Oop. Um. It's World War II in a slightly different universe um, we're following the princess of a small nation trying to escape Germany's reign um, and she goes ham and then there's uh, a witch girl that she's childhood friends with question mark I've only seen one episode and she's like cryogenically frozen this is one of those hitler was into the occult timelines i believe and she like opens it slightly recognizing the girl inside and she like falls out of a plane and the fucking she jumps on a goddamn machine gun like a broomstick it's so fucking good it's beautifully animated it's just amazing in every way it is definitely someone's masterpiece and you may be wondering what is it on my plan to watch? I told myself I have to finish Ancient Magus Bride before I watch this. 
I'm actually really surprised that the score's so low on here. Does it like fall off or something? Oh no. I hope it doesn't fall off. Cause I thought it was great. It gave me Miyazaki vibes. I was sobbing the entire time. Oh, just lost my mind at that anime, I'm telling you. Now we have, um, I guess I'll do this now. I had, I had 18 shows in my currently watching list when I did this, and I am now down to eight. I didn't finish them or anything like that. Tasha, you're just like getting into shit over there. What the fuck are you doing? I think she found a box that the Goku figure used to be in. Oh, do you really want in there? Okay. Um, I don't remember a lot of shit that was on my watching list like I would watch two or three episodes of it and keep it there because that's where I designated that would go but I can't remember any of the things that actually fucking happened in it so I've opened back up the on hold tag to be for shows that were in watching that I was planning on watching but then it, it fell off or I can't remember what was going on or whatever and I can move stuff that was on on hold because I was watching it before I started this challenge back to the watching list. Um, I'm going to give it a, a one set buffer time. So if I move something to on hold, I won't be bringing it back until after I've done another one of these. Um, I'll try to keep the watching down to 10 titles just to keep it less cluttered. Um, and more tight and I'll remember what the fuck's happening um so I'll go to the stuff that's been moved to on hold there's been quite a few anime in this list so let me scroll up because I think um yeah I was at I was at my parents and I was like watching anime but there were other people in the room so I was watching shit dubbed um I was like, oh, well, will everyone here enjoy uh, Lupin? <laughs> so Lupin the third part two, I have yet to finish part one, which I've been watching on Crunchyroll, but I did start part two because it's on Hulu and dubbed. I got, yeah, a good seven episodes into it, um, and it's on the on hold list now because it's not something I'll be actively watching until I finish the original set of Lupin. Um... After that, we have the stuff that was on my watching that I moved to on hold. Um, Boogie Pop Phantom. Just because I forgot what the fuck was happening. It's one of those Tarantino timelines, which I really liked at the time, but then I gave it like two months before going back, and I can't tell you a single thing that fucking happened. Which is my bad. Absolutely my bad. Um... Code Realize, which I did start um, this set, and it was on my watching, but then I moved it just because I didn't feel the need to keep watching it. It's, you know, your typical, um, typical Tome dating sim game turned anime. You know, all of the guys are your romance routes and such. Um, and it's okay. Um, Maid Sama I moved to on hold because I just haven't watched it in a while. I don't have any motivation to keep watching it. But I do like the characters. I like the show. I just don't have motivation to keep watching it right now. I'm just not in the mood, I guess. Um, I'm going to stop opening those up. Because there's no point. God either, which I started, I think, last set two episodes in, just not feeling any more episodes right now. Oh. Hino's Journey, again, I started it, and it's good, I just don't have um, any stay in keeping watching it. It's an episodic show, so it doesn't really have any hooks to go to the next episode. Um, at least for my two episode fucking experience. Um, Maria Hollick Alive, I smashed the first season, but I don't like the opening theme as good in the second season, and that's what was really keeping me going through the first one. 
Um. Hot. Uh, spice and wolf. I'll definitely go back to that one. But I think that's one of the ones that I might just want to read the light novel of instead. And last but not least. Oh. After Lost, which is on here fucking somewhere. I don't know the... Butter? Yeah, I don't know what it is in Japanese. I thought it was just After Lost. Yeah, I, I chucked After Lost on here, and now we have the shows that I dropped, and then we'll be done with this little roundup. Um, pretty simple this time around. We have Black Bullet, which I was really interested in and really ready to get into, but I have a pretty bad case of arachnophobia, and it turns out all the mobs in this are going to be spider-type enemies, and I really can't th sit through that. I'll probably try out the light novel because I can usually read about that sort of thing and be fine, but I cannot watch the anime. That's the only reason it got dropped. The only reason I didn't finish the first episode. Um, I'm not sure I dropped anything else. Oh, I dropped one other show. Sparrow's Hotel. The episodes of this show are three minutes long and I fucking dropped it. You're gonna need to take that bomb and just fucking live with it. Three minutes long, 12 episodes. They're like barely the length of an actual episode and a half of a regular show. Butter really wants out, but I'm about to round up here. Butter, butter, butter. Um, I, I just don't fucking know. It was not good. <laughs> it just wasn't good. So I dropped it, even with the three minute episodes. And that will bring us to the end of this little roundup, here we have started 11 out of 466 shows and added two from off of the list. Three shows were spared and left unplanned to watch. One show was dropped, uh, two shows were dropped. Five have been completed, four of which from planned to watch and one from watching, one from outside the list. Um, so six have been completed. I didn't do my math right on here, oops. Um, Four were moved to watching, and nine out of 18 were moved to on hold. So now we have a grand total of, God, I didn't do the math yet, 454-ish shows left on my plan to watch list that I have yet to watch a single episode of. 14 shows have been completed since the start. There are eight shows on my watching list. Five shows have been dropped and nine shows have been moved to on hold. <clears throat> That's the end of the uh, roundup this time around. I'll catch y'all next time.